not going to open before uh, 15th of August. Right, that's uh, what they say. You know, if uh, I look at the scenario as far as, you know, our uh, current academic session is going on, that's pretty late for us. Yes. But uh, we can't help it. <laughs> I think we all have to live with it. So uh, it's 4.30 and uh, I think in 30 seconds we'll start. Uh, and uh, so uh, we're live on YouTube also, Narain uh, Jaswinder, ma'am. So 30 seconds and with your permission, we'll start. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please go ahead. I'm Lovely. Looking forward. So, <laughs> just give me half a second and I'll be back. So good afternoon, uh, students. In 30 seconds, we'll start. So uh, we're just warming up. It's a beautiful day today and hopefully it's as beautiful where you are. Uh, we have Dr. Naren Chirmale with me and we'll start in another 10 seconds. Excellent. So uh, just with that man, Naren, if you allow me, can we start? Yes, yes please. please. Fantastic. Uh, good evening, good afternoon and good morning to Naren Chirmale. Uh, welcome to Ideas That Matter, series of webinars by Shulini University, Kasali Hills. I am very excited to bring to all of us today, Dr. Naren Churmule. Uh, Naren is a very dear friend, uh, but I'll talk about our friendship later. As a quick introduction, uh, Naren is a biologist at heart, but loves to talk to students and teachers and other people about lots and lots of inspiring thoughts. He's been a researcher initially uh, all, his, all his life pretty much in the US, uh, moved to a company called Amgen, which is one of the largest biotechnology companies of the world, where he was driving several big biotechnology, new molecule discovery efforts, and then became, I think the India bug hit, hit him, the Swades bug hit him, and he came back to India with a company called Biocon, that each one of us uh, would have heard of, or you would have heard of, where he was heading research with uh, Biocon. I'm told that a lot of new stuff that Biocon did was uh, championed by uh, Naren. Uh, so uh, apart from talking about biology, he speaks uh, to lots of young minds, igniting them about new ideas, inspiring them, making them self-aware. And that's what's going to be the topic today for us. Uh, quick introduction to me again. My name is Atul Khosla. I'm the founder and uh, pro-vice chancellor of Shulini University located in Kasali Hills, Himachal Pradesh, Solon. I'm a BTEC from ID Kanpur and uh, uh, MBA post that, worked in different parts of the world in consulting, seven different uh, countries and 35 different cities. I don't know whether you can beat me on that, Narain, but it's been a wide experience for me. Uh, anyway, uh, delighted to have Narain over here. Uh, like I said, a very, very dear friend of ours and also a distinguished professor at Shulini and my advisor again. Uh, before we start, just Jaswinder Bhai, we'd love you to speak for a little bit of uh, time, 35, uh, a minute or so. And if you could introduce the school to Naren and the work that you're doing, and then we'll have Naren take over. Over to you, okay. Ma'am Jasinder, Ma'am. Thank you. Uh, good morning uh, to Dr. Naren. Namaskar, I think, is covering and encompassing all. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. India has taught Namaskar, Namaste to the whole world now in the COVID days. Yes. Uh, well, talking about uh, DAV Public School, Ludhiana, uh, this school came into being in the year 1983. And uh, uh, presently, uh, we are catering to the educational needs of uh, around 5,500 students. And we are affiliated to the Central Board of Secondary Education. And uh, I'm very happy to share with you that uh, this school has been one of the pioneer institutions in the state of Punjab. It is a very well-known institution in Northern it India. Is. And uh, we are proud that, you know, a large number of our alumni are very well settled in their lives all, all across the globe. A uh, large number of students are doctors, engineers, and uh, professionals in different walks of life. And uh, as far as uh, my status is concerned, I'm associated with the school uh, for last, uh, uh, it's, it's my 28th year. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I'm proud to be, you know, a Davian to the core. 
and today i'm there with all my staff members and a large number of students i think they are slowly slowly joining in uh, to listen to dr narain and uh, thank you mr khosla this is our second webinar from your side uh, really grateful to you for extending this invitation no we we know that the dav school uh, that you run ma'am is one of the best in the region and thank it's so an much. honor for us to you know be talking to you again uh, like i was telling you i come from ludhiana uh, and i get goose pimples uh, addressing all of you and hopefully uh, we will justify the next one hour uh, i won't take more time in between i can't come in between narain and uh, the students and the teachers so narain over to you i'm going to be switching myself off now and probably 15 to 18 minutes down the line i'll come back again over to you dr narain chirmule okay thank you so much thank you to all of you thank you to sir swinder for a very nice introduction to your school i'm very excited to present uh, a little bit of what i call uh, my experiments with self awareness and um, before i uh, get into this i'll tell you a little bit about why i think uh, this is such an important phenomenon um you know i think as we all grow up in our lives we get we we look around and see and have a lot of experiences and and many of these experiences disturb us in many different ways uh and and we are not able to deal with all these disturbances that are things that are happening not just disturbances all the sensations that we see outside our body and we get all of that information we are not able to process it so um Uh, i have been also experiencing all of these things myself so what i do is i do this process i've discovered a process for myself to be self aware and it's a very simple word in english but i think it it that it needs to be understood but before we start um, atul thank you so much again for um, inviting me to this talk i'm very excited uh, your um, experiences have also helped me understand how to present myself uh in this in this different forums uh my background is i did my high school in lucknow uh from kendriya vidyalaya after which i did my phd in uh university of bombay uh, in tata tata memorial hospital um my experience has primarily been uh, in development of biologics and vaccines um and uh, i like to do a little bit of public speaking and we'll come to that during my talk uh and you can uh, see a ted talk that i had done ted x talk that i had done a couple of years ago uh as as atul mentioned i've worked in many different companies around the world and um, my expertise uh, like i said is in drug development uh i had inflection points i like to talk about this concept in, the, in my life and my inflection points in my mind were uh at a at a point when i finished my masters uh i had a choice of whether to go for my phd or whether to join a marketing division in a pharmaceutical company and for actually at that time for no particular reason that i think i can think of i decided to do phd and that changed my life right so that was that was a point in that i had to make a decision uh and the other decision was one that i made about 5 years ago of um, deciding to come back to india to work in india after after spending 30 years in the us so that also has been a very big decision for me and very good decision i think in retrospect and therefore that this is these two decisions have been my inflection points i'm also very interested in music uh, i am an amateur tabla player and i've learned to play the flute uh, and i love hindustani classical music so i talk a lot about that topic also So today what I'm going to talk to you about is give you some examples of how you can become self-aware by just observing things around you in a systematic way. And then a a a process for maybe developing a strategy for your growth for your own self and then I'll end with the importance of culture in education. <clears throat> so um the first usually what i do with this session is i ask you to ask me any questions uh but but since we are in a webinar uh, we'll do that a little bit later let me show you a process of how to ask questions so what happens in the field uh, of of 
of uh, data, um, the data progresses from information to knowledge to wisdom. There's a gradation of the uh, data process. So what is data? Data is just some dots. You know what data is, right? When you analyze data, that those dots become, get a form. So they start looking like something when you analyze the data, there becomes information. What is information? When you interpret the information, it converts itself to knowledge. And knowledge looks something like this. What is knowledge? And it's very abstract, right? When you, when you have to explain what is knowledge. I'll give you an example. You go to school and you learn biology, you get the information of biology, you get the information of physics, you get the information of English, you get the information of physical training, and then you get the knowledge of the high school degree. That's how, that's how I interpret knowledge as. Now, if you apply the knowledge, then it becomes wisdom. And what is wisdom? Wisdom is diverse knowledge, meaning if you now you have a high school degree, the knowledge of a high school degree, but now you can speak very well, you have good public speaking skills, you can communicate very well, you may be an artist, so you you have art, so you have different forms of, of knowledge that makes you wise. So this is my ability, my process of understanding how these analyses uh, result in generation of wisdom, okay? And um, I, might, I started this slide by saying, showing you, how do you ask questions? Because asking questions is very important. Um, today, in today's world, you can get an answer to any question you want. For example, if you have any question, you just type it in Google and Google will generally give you an answer, right? Uh, but there is no Google for asking a question. So, so this is a process that I've discovered for myself of how to ask questions. So in the same context of data to, to wisdom that I showed you earlier, generally speaking, if you ask a question that starts with uh, who, what, when, where, you will get information. If you ask a question which starts with how, it will, um, you will get knowledge. And if you ask a question with why, you will get wisdom. So let me give you an example, right? Uh, who, you can see this picture at the background of my, it's Abraham Lincoln's diagram, a picture. Um, who painted that painting? I'll say, oh, it was Lynn Perez, um, who is, who's my daughter's partner. How did she paint the, how did she paint the painting? Um, she actually did it on a charcoal, on a, on a um, transparent paper so that it can be visible on the fridge door. Um, why did she paint Abraham Lincoln? Um, I think we'll have to ask her that question, but I would assume she would have to say, oh, Abraham Lincoln was a very important man in, in, the, in life. He, he, he really respected people, he respected equality, um, and, and you know, I'm very inspired by him, and therefore I wrote his, uh, that's, for, that's why I painted his painting. See, you see how the nature of the question gets you an answer of either information, knowledge, or wisdom. So this is how you ask questions in life. If you ask a why question, you will get wisdom, okay? So another question that uh, I would ask, for example, uh, or you would ask for, your, for yourself, how do I choose a college? That's a question to ask, and you are going to get knowledge from if you ask this question, right? So if you just type this question in Google, that's what I did, we can get this list of questions, this list of, of things that you can do, but you have to figure these answers out yourself. That is the awareness process, right? So you develop a short list of colleges that you might want to attend, rank them in some priorities. Don't procrastinate, uh, focus on what you want. Review the curriculum of all these colleges, review the extracurricular activities of all these colleges and investigate 
how this college really works. So, but you know, to expand on how to choose a college, I'd like to invite Atul to speak a little bit more because I think being in an academic environment in a college, he can probably provide a little bit more flavor or color to answer this question more seriously. So Atul, if I can invite you. Thank you very much. You know, it's a topic which is very close to my heart, Narain. And there are lots of teachers and students over here. Uh, and I think this question comes all the time. How do we, what course do I do? Which uh, university do I go to? Which college do I go to? So there are five things uh, which I normally speak about, Narain. The first is my experience, uh, which I link to saying that the institute matters more than the course. And my experience is very simple. I am a Solon boy. I grew up in Himachal, it's a small town. I, the, all the odds were against me. No one ever thought I would ever get into IIT. No one before me from Himachal had ever got into IIT. And I was not a great student. I was a 76 person student in my 12th standard. But I got into IIT and I was so lucky I made it to ID Kanpur and whatever little I've done in life was because of the amazing experience I had at IIT. So I think the first thought that will come to your mind would be, how do I choose the right institution, which is what, uh, and why should I pick up the right institution, which is the why question that Narin is asking. So the course that you will do could be pretty much anything, I would say. It's the institution that matters because that's what's going to give you the ability to ask questions and problem solve. It's the culture, which is again, Narendra is going to talk about that is going to give. I think the second thing I'd like to say is that do something that your heart tells you. You know, you'll be very confused right now. You'll go to your teachers, students, you'll go to your friends, you'll go to your nana, nani, dada, dadi. Do something that you love doing because if you do something that you love doing, you'll excel in that. Knowledge is not like what Naren said. You can get knowledge from the computer, from Google. Knowledge is not at premium anymore. What's at premium today is your ability to ask questions, your ability to problem solve, your ability to collaborate, your ability to lead teams, which are what I call me skills and we skills. And the last thing I'll also say is dream big. Think of something spectacularly big and have fun along the way. When I ask students the rain and ask them, what's your dream? They'll say, I want to be a successful person. To me, that's not a dream. A dream would be when I say my dream is to win the Nobel Prize. And I generally say that, you know, it's very difficult for me to say that, Narain, but my dream is to build the Nobel Prize. My dream at Shulani is to make sure that every student of Himachal, Punjab, Haryana probably sees more success than I have. Everyone owns a Mercedes. And that's the purpose that I drive Shulani with. So I'm going to, if people allow, I'm going to put a small video of Shulani, which I myself put together two, three days back, which I get inspired about because I'm so passionate about Shulani. If you allow me, I'm going to put a small video on this, which will give you a glimpse about uh, why I need to be, I can't screen share, guys. Uh, Kamal, I don't know what's happening. Uh, I'm not no, able to share. Do I have to uh, unshare? Uh, you, you probably have to unshare. That's right. That's right. You have to yeah, unshare. Yeah. Sorry. You. Sorry for this. No, it's okay. Okay. No, it's okay. So, yeah. Yeah. So, students, this is uh, a video I did uh, because I was just passionate about putting some pictures together. I hope you like it.
Beautiful oh, video. Very nice. Very nice. It's really breathtaking and world class. Thank you, ma'am. Well, uh, the reason I wanted to show this is because I've been actually watching, I think this whole question of why is around me for the last 24 hours, Narain, I've been watching a few TEDx videos and every one of these videos I saw said, find the purpose of your life, find the purpose of what you want to do. So whether it's a teacher, whether it's a student, I would say, ask this question, uh, why? Uh, especially for students, why should I study this course? Why should I go to that university or college? And I think that's what's going to give you the answer. Uh, not, you know, what does it do? So if it hits your heart and if you love it, that's what I think you should do. Uh, so over to you, Narain. I think it's, it's your day. So you probably you need to pick up your presentation again, but that was from my side. So why most important? No, I, th I think that is so apt. And I think you, you really provided color to answering this question. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so the next topic that I wanted to talk about is something that uh, I have been very passionate about. Uh, and I think um, I, I like mentor and mentoring processes. And one of the things I will tell the teachers and also for, I tell this to myself is uh, let's as adults or uh, older folks, let's, let's constantly mentor everybody systematically. And, um, and you know, I, I have developed a process to how to mentor and I can, I'll share a few points from this slide and there are others that I have which I would, can share outside. So this is what I call a circle of life. So we all live in a world which, all, which affects us all the time. And what happens in our brains is that we are always bombarded by information that is coming and it, it affects us positively, negatively all the time. Like for example, uh, for myself, for example, in, in that middle circle, which is you, me, uh, I like gardening, I like cooking, uh, I may like to write poems, I like dancing, uh, I like reading, for example. All the things that I like to do, I put in that center circle. Uh, in my city, uh, I used to love to go to music concerts, but now the, all the music concerts are online. So that's sort of that's what the change in the city. Uh, in in I, I hear that there's a there was a big storm in Bengal and a lot of people were affected. Um, and due to the COVID situation, the environment is becoming absolutely gorgeous. You know, the environment is beautiful right these days. In the country, of course, we can't think of anything else these days other than lockdown and the economy and how we're going to get together. Obviously, there are all those thoughts are going on. And in the world, uh, it's very interesting. There are more than 25,000 articles, papers that have been published recently in the last two, three months on COVID itself. So the explosion of science is happening. And uh, there's, a, there's a manned space mission that happened with the, with the SpaceX shuttle, you know, the private... Uh, Elon Musk's company sent that. So a lot of things are happening around you. And the, one of the things I say to, to myself and also uh, uh, to, to you is make this circle of life in your notebook. See what's affecting you, your country, your city, because all of these things otherwise smish and mash in your head and you're not able to resolve them nicely. So when you resolve them nicely, then it becomes a nice way to become aware of what's happening and what the interactions of all of these things are. Okay, so this is a circle of life process. The next topic that I like to talk about is inflection point. And the inflection point is a, is a point in the curve uh, where the shape of the curve changes. So what is an inflection point in your careers? Uh, you're, you went to elementary school in certain certain place, then you did well, and then you went to uh, middle school, and now you're in high school. And so that line is going, your, your line of career or, or education is going pretty okay, right? Then you will decide to go to some college and then, you're, you're, and then you will be on that line, right? And you will decide, let's say you go, decide to go to Shulini University or whichever other university that you decide to go to or college that you decide to go to, you will make a decision. But only when you are, when you have made the decision and later on, you will realize that the decision that you made to go to the uh, to that university uh, was the inflection point in your career. You, the inflection point is never ahead of you. It's always behind you. So you have to make a decision, move on with the decision, and then you will realize that that was the inflection point. So that is the process of inflection point. So, in, so what do you have to do in your lives 
to change your career or, or have a fantastic career in your life. And we can go through a lot of points, but I've listed some over here. So what is, you have things that in your control and that are not in your control that can, that can make a huge influence on changing or, or influencing how your uh, career and your goals will be met. You have to have courage, discipline, you have to have a positive attitude and passion, as Atul just mentioned. You have to be able to decide things very clearly. You have to be effective in communication, truthfulness, and above all, you have to be healthy. You have to do exercise. If you don't exercise and keep your health, physical and mental health strong, everything else falls apart. Then there are a lot of things that are not in your control that are very important for you to, um, for your success like the micro and the macro environment that you're in. You have no control over what is going to happen with this COVID in, uh, today and tomorrow, but you know you can't do anything about it, but it's going to influence on, on your career. The opportunities, you have no control over the opportunities, but you can be prepared for the opportunities. Uh, you should have a good mentor and you can figure out how to get a good mentor. Your teachers, are very influential in ability for you to, for your success, but they are not in your control. You know, you can't tell them anything to, to change things. Time is not in your control, but you can use time effectively. Your support system like family and friends and luck, luck is not in your control, but you can be prepared for luck and taking opportunities. So these are some factors that could change your life, yeah? So I'm gonna talk about one of the things here. One, I can talk about all of these things, but let's just talk about courage. So what is the opposite of courage? The opposite of courage is fear. And just for fun, I Googled some pictures on, courage, on, on fear. Before we explore courage, let's look at what fear is because fear is opposite of courage. So I guess some people were told to act fearful. And so this is what they did. They acted fearfully. This is people getting very, very fearful. Here's another picture. Here's another picture. People are terrified of something. They're acting terrified. And I say acting because all the background scene of everybody is the same. So I'm sure they wanted to get a picture of fear. So then if you explore, if you explore the word fear and see what fear means, uh, when you feel fearful, you, you feel a lot of things. You might be sweating. Uh, your heart rate might increase, you might have butterflies in your stomach, and you suddenly stop thinking, right? That be, and there are many other things, but these are the main things that you can think about. So what are the hormones in your body that influence fear? Things like adrenaline, dopamine, serotonin, oxytocin, all of these are hormones that you must have studied or at least heard of during your classes. Yeah? These, are the, these are things that influence fear. Now, which part of your brain is involved in fear? It is called the amygdala. It is a portion of the brain that is responsible for what is called fight or flight. In the evolution of humans uh, or, or the mammalian species or all species actually, the amygdala is a part of the brain that senses danger, right? It senses danger. Like if, if a person is walking in a jungle and suddenly a tiger attacks you, you have only two choices, either to fight or to run away. Those are the only two choices you have. You have to do something immediately, right? That's what the amygdala tells you to do. So what happens, our lives have changed completely. We are not walking around in a jungle and tigers are not attacking us every day, but we still have the amygdala. So what happens is you decide to choose your, 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 you're in this paranoid situation of which school, which college to choose, right? You have three colleges to choose from and you, and you can't decide, you know, one or the other. And one of the things that you might be experiencing is the fear of making the wrong decision, right? Your brain cannot distinguish between whether a tiger is attacking you or whether you can't decide or whether you're, which college you're choosing. Your your sensation is fear, right? So the only response you will get is being very, very afraid. So therefore, fear is binary. Being aware that fear is binary, meaning uh, either uh, you're afraid or not afraid, is an important feature that will allow you to overcome fear. That is one example, right? 
So now I, I started by saying your inflection point is courage. So let's explore what is courage. Courage is actually not the opposite of fear. What is, if you explore what courage is, courage is, you know, you have high energy to do very courageous things. You have sense of determination. You, know, you still have butterflies in your stomach, but now you start thinking very clearly, you know exactly what to do. What are the hormones that are involved in courage in are adrenaline, dopamine, serotonin, exotonin? They are same hormones. So they must be acting on different parts of the brain. And in fact, they do. If you look at PET scans of brain activity in people who have, who do courageous acts, right? You can see over a period of time, the portions of the brain that are involved in courage become more red and red, become more, inter more integrated. You get better and better. Your network of the brain starts connecting better and better. So the, so the way to improve courage is to do small, small courageous things all the time. Do small, small courage. Don't do the huge thing, huge courageous things the first time. Do a small courageous things, then do the next small courageous thing and next small courageous things. And suddenly things will explode. It will become very, very, very easy to do courageous things. So let's explore one courageous thing that I find very, very, very fearful to do. And now, you know, I'm getting used to it, which is what? Public speaking, right? We are all very afraid of public speaking, but it's a courageous thing to do. And if you do public speaking, not just for the sake of public speaking, but to improve your courageousness. If you do do it for that purpose, then you will improve. So there's a whole line of activity that I do for public speaking, but I'll share something that I do online. It's a very different form of things that I do and I'll do it as an exercise and I'll do it myself and then we'll, do, we'll try something later when we, when we meet face to face. The main thing about public speaking is your voice, your ability to speak, right? You have a lot of modulation in your voice and you can change the volume, the tone, the pitch, the timbre, the pause. I can speak slowly, the pace, and I can speak in a rhythm. So depending on the space I use, I can change my voice and speak very clearly, by, but being aware that I have so many options to speak so well, I can improve my public speaking. I'm just gonna read this sentence for you. And usually what I do is I ask a lot of different people to read this sentence and I'm gonna read it twice. I want you to imagine an elephant painted bright red waving to and fro in sync with a giant green parrot dancing on the elephant's head, shrieking, let's do the fandango. I want you to imagine an elephant painted in red, waving to and fro to a giant green parrot, dancing on the elephant's head, shrieking, let's do the fandango. When you, re when you say it like this, this image shows up in words. So public speaking is about many things, but expressing yourself. So I'm gonna end my talk and spend more time on questions. And, and I'll end after Atul speaks a little bit more about culture and, uh, and I'll come back and finish my presentation. So Atul, back to you. <laughs> it's, it's so amazing, uh, Narain. I mean, uh, I was getting goose pimples uh, when you speak about courage. So students, teachers, this is not about jumping off a hill when we're talking about courage. It's about things that we are fearful about. And I'm going to take some two examples over here. Uh, I could not speak, Narain. I, I would stammer when I started working to the extent that I almost lost my job at McKinsey, which was the number one job in those days, probably still is. So what did I do? I actually bought a camera and I started speaking to the camera every day. Every day for the next seven years, I would speak to a camera. 
till one day my boss who was uh, uh, the previous boss wanted to fire me and then i worked with another boss who told me atul you got amazing style you're god gifted so from someone who could never speak who would stammer i became someone who was so called god gifted in that person's mind i also spoke about the fact that i did not have great marks again courage comes into play i will again give an example over here narain i did not get into iit first go after my 12th i did not get into iit i actually made it to rec silchar now nit silchar computer science but something struck me my gut said i was i'm made for something bigger and i took the courage to tell my father i am not joining nit leaving nit silchar for a 76 percent mark student computer science was a very big thing everyone laughed at me my friends laughed at me many of my relatives told my parents that you must be stupid but i told them i had courage to tell them ki i think agar is saal rsc silchar mein ho gaya to agle saal itna to mil hi jayega so i can definitely take a year off and try something different and i did that and i made it so i always tell my students teachers over here that if i can do it and i was ordinary all of you can do it it's all about making the belly of india the ordinary students successful all of you who think that you are ordinary are not ordinary because all of you are extraordinary all you have to do is ask the why question the purpose of your life and build a bit of courage around that and the moment you do that you're all set to succeed you know get that passion in narain over to you thank you um so you know i have worked in uh, many organizations over the years and um one of the things that i have learned for myself is that there are four areas of work that um everyone has to be involved with but it applies not just to work it applies to all of us including you as students as teachers as principals as as general people so i put it in four buckets one is uh your work and in in your okay so it will be studies right one is work the second is you have to think about the budget and the finance and the money you know you as 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 high school students you probably don't worry about money so much because you know you you're you're taking care of but be aware of what the financial situations are around you Econo- economics and read a little bit of economics see what's happening in the world around the economy keep a pay attention to money the third is uh, sort of your own talent uh, it is not just the work that is important but also what you do your hobbies your travel everything that you do around you and how you um, how you explore your own self beyond just the work thing that you do and the last and final thing the fourth thing is culture and which is what i talk about here culture contains a lot of different things some of them are listed here your ethics your values how you use time your ability to decide your attitude your relationships that you have with all the people that you interact with what is your what is the structure of how your network is uh, again language religion family how you dress uh, gender is such an important discussion in in society today uh, art food music your personal space so many things in culture right pay attention to these things and your life will transform so i'll stop here and maybe atul we can go to um, see if there are questions that people want to ask i'll stop sharing okay thank thank you narain uh, uh, the moments in life that are transformational i remember that Uh, when i was at id kanpur uh, arun shauri gave me gave came to id kanpur and gave a speech and that was transformational for me because it changed my life i think your speech today will change my life i learned so much i hope some of you some of you in the audience would have also got goose pimples and got excited the way i did listening to narain please ask questions we are there to answer the questions we have two of them over here uh, one uh is i think related a little to you know the work that you do narain so himanshi is asking when are schools going to reopen you know i am being a biologist to... you can talk a little bit about what's going to happen on the virus and what's happening with the uh with the vaccine i think you are keeping track of that so probably 
uh, you can give some sense to him and what will happen. Yeah, I think we should answer this question in three three ways. I will give a little bit about the virus and what, what the vaccine development in, in that environment. Um, and Jashwinder, maybe you can speak, elaborate a little bit from the co specific college perspective. And I thought you can also give a perspective of, you know, what you are seeing yeah. around you. So let me start with the you know, vaccine part. So as you all know, that uh, there is a lot of work that has been going on in developing a vaccine. And the vaccine will come. There's no question that the vaccine will come, but it'll take time. Uh, and the virus is a complicated virus. It is not a simple virus. Uh, and it has many components of which the vaccine, to develop a vaccine is not going to be easy. A lot of people are trying to make a vaccine. So there are multiple layers. How, how good should the vaccine be? The best vaccine would be one that you get the vaccine and you never get infected, right? Uh, and that'll be fantastic if we get such a vaccine. Then on the other side, there may be a vaccine which probably um, doesn't work really well in terms of doesn't protect you from getting infected, but probably protects you. If you're infected, you'll actually get a lesser form of the disease. You won't, the, the disease won't cause, uh, you know, pathology or death, for example, right? If it prevents that, that even then that's a good vaccine. Doesn't, it, you still get infected, but it doesn't allow you, it, it prevents from death. You, it enhances your immune system a little bit at least. That's also a good vaccine. You know, there's also theoretical possibility that the vaccine could be bad, but at least initial results suggest that that is not the case. So I think because of all the different ways in about a year or so to figure out all of these things. So the vaccine is coming, um, but till then there's a lot of preventive measures that we can take like wearing masks, doing the usual hand washing and you know, or keeping, keeping safe distance from people if you can uh, and, and doing the right things. So that is from a scientific perspective of when we should come back, right? Uh, maybe I'll hand it over to um, Mrs. Jaswinder to give the perspective of the school, of when the school will open. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Naren. Uh, well, you know, we also want um, our students to be back on school, on the campus. We are really looking forward to have them all back with us. But then, you know, as you said that the vaccine still might take some time, right? Uh, what I can add from my side that, you know, in the last uh, two and a half months, since when the country was put under lockdown and now slowly we are opening up, we all have learned a lot about what this vaccine is and what, what the situation, health situation can be and how can we protect ourselves with simple precautions like hand washing and covering your mask, uh, face with mask and, you know, maintaining physical distance. So uh, what I expect from my students as a school head that, uh, you know, it's not possible that a set of teachers will be able to handle thousands of children. The responsibility, the onus is on the self now. So this is what I can, you know, send this message to my students through this uh, mode that now they all have to behave in a very, very responsible manner. I understand children love to hug each other, shook, shake hands with each other, and you know, to move about in groups. But now I think uh, we have to learn the new normals of life. And of course, schools will be putting, you know, new infrastructural things in, whatever uh, improvements are required, but a lot is expected from the individuals also, even from the students. And then as, as we were talking about courage, then yes, uh, the students as well as the parents have to take this courage that of course we have to move out of our shell now. And that's how I think uh, the herd immunity will also develop. If we just keep sitting indoors, I don't think that we'll be able to survive that for a pretty long time. <laughs> so well said, Jaswinder, ma'am. You know, what I'll, what I'll add over here is uh, and uh, Naren very nicely put it that the environment is not in our hands. So uh, schools will open when the government's, government allows and uh, when they believe it's the right time. We do anticipate them to open hopefully in August. So don't worry students. I mean, it's a you know, couple of months here and there. It doesn't honestly matter. I gave you my example. I took a year off and I was preparing for IIT. I thought the world had come to an end. I thought I'd lost an year. I thought the world is finished for me. You know, I'm going to be one year behind all my friends. Honestly, it doesn't matter. So that's one. The second message I'm going to give you is it's your time today. 
So upskill yourself, do something that you love to do. If you love playing the guitar, start doing that, you know, start playing the flute, if that's what you do or cooking or whatever you can do within the constraints of your home that you're allowed to do. Uh, because this time that you have to, in your hands won't come back. So don't waste it, uh, have the courage to, to start pursuing your passion. So th that'll be my thought. Atul, if, if, I'm sorry to try to interrupt you visually, but I was getting very excited. Uh, before you ask me, why don't I volunteer to play the flute myself? Because I feel uh, uh. <laughs> I can add to a little bit because literally in the last three months that I've been doing Skype lessons with my guru, Aditya Sutar from Sangli on Skype, um, I have learned more flute in the last three months than I did in the last two years. So it has been a fascinating time. So I'll play one song for you. Wonderful. <laughs> Lovely. Play a song we know, Naren. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'll show you very close. You have to open half a hole. This is the full hole. You have to open half the hole to get that one swirl. This opening the half the hole is extremely difficult. You know, closing the full hole is easy. Opening it is very easy. Opening exactly half is very difficult. You can't open three fourths or more than three fourths. You have to exactly half. That is huge That's practice. <laughs> So, so Momo, Mo, Apne, ham, Apne, Momo, ke dhago se hume mo liya, uh, Naren. <laughs> okay, let's. Of uh, you know what you said, uh, we have time. Utilize it efficiently. <laughs> Lovely. So let's go into uh, the second question. I think I'll answer that. Uh, anonymous attendee is asking, can you tell some careers other than CA and others? You know, CA is just one career. Uh, so I don't know your name. I wish I knew, but there's so many careers now. Uh, you know, you if if you're, I think a non-science. So you can do journalism. You can do hotel management. You can do design. You can do English honors. You can do economics. You can do a BBA. You can do a BCom. Then do an MBA. You can play music. Uh, you can be an event manager. So what I would say is, uh, whatever you do, excel in it. And you don't have to you know, follow CA if you don't like it. Only if you love numbers and you're good in accounting, you'll be able to get into a CA. Otherwise, it's a difficult program to be. CA is also a great career. I personally find it very boring, Narain. Uh, uh, don't kill me, all the CA guys over here who are aspiring. But uh, you know, I would say, uh, when, when I was listening to Narain, uh, I, I did not like my, uh, I was a failed, I'm a failed engineer. I hated my four years in engineering at IIT because I was not meant to be. But the moment I got into an MP, I just loved it, you know, and I just danced to work every day. I just love every moment of uh, being a teacher now. And I think once that starts happening, success will follow you. I think that's uh, what I am going to say about, you know, your CA question. Janvi is asking, how do I know what is my 100% potential? Uh, Naren, what's your thought about it? Yeah, actually, generally, that's a very good question. And, and um, you know, in, in, um, in mathematics and statistics, right, there's, uh, there's really no such thing as 100%. There's nothing is ever 100% in life or nothing is ever 100%. So the 100% of always the, you strive to get to 100%, but you never get there, right? Let's say I, let's say I, um, as an example, uh, I want to play the, I, I want to play badminton. Right, and I want to, uh, I want to win the Nobel Prize. Oh, oh, not Nobel. I want to win the Olympic gold medal in in the in in uh, badminton. So right. So then I'll practice. I'll practice. I'll get better. I'll get better, and I, I and I can decide how to get better 
by winning a few tournaments then i will, let's say i win uh, all india national championship okay great that how how far have i reached maybe 75% because i won india championship now i want to win the asia cup right asia championship so i i go to next level then now maybe maybe at 90% then i go to the olympics and then i get i get to the olympics and i win the gold medal in the olympics is that 100% no that that is probably not because it's not the badminton that you play it is a badminton and how you now next thing is how how can i become a better coach and teach other other people so never it's never 100% right but the strive to get to the 100% is the journey narendra it reminds me of a small exercise and i'll request every student and teacher to do it you know just put your hand up and try to touch the roof as high as you can as high as you can as high as you can got the maximum narendra i think so no <laughs> i i want you to do 4 inches more oh yeah let's try 2 inches more yeah Let's try one inch board. Yes. Okay. That's. I wanted to leave a lesson to everyone over here. What you think is your potential, you actually have thirty to forty percent more than what you believe you can do, like what you just did right now. So, students, don't worry about whether you've reached one hundred percent or not, or not, because every time you learn something, you can actually do better than that next time. So, there's nothing like hundred percent potential. if you know hussein bolt every time he beats his own record right and it's that's physical you know mental things can still be improved but even on physical fitness he is so much good so that's what i'll uh, tell you janvi uh, just keep pushing yourself but enjoy doing it if you enjoy doing it you'll keep on uh, moving towards excellence so uh, a very interesting question uh, uh, why students are not taught practical stuff only theoretical stuff narendra what do you think you know i i i think um i don't I mean, I'll, i'll have to ask i'll have to defer to the detailed question to both jaswinder and you atul about the about the schooling system but in my own personal experience i think uh, i think the, the 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 nature of education has been evolving over the last several decades and i think um, teachers are becoming more experienced in terms of teaching um many different practical things that that happen in life and i believe and i shulini i experienced this in shulini i think that and like as like atul will obviously say that it is not just the curriculum that is important but the extra curriculum is also very important so combination of many different things will enable the practical parts to happen right it is not just the practical in science is the practical in commerce it's practical in, in arts it's in practicals in uh, all the subjects so i'm going to defer to atul first and then maybe just swinder to give a response to this question i think it's not in our hands much in school because cbsc or icsc or other boards identify the curriculum that schools will have but universities are autonomous they can determine the curriculum they have and how they teach so i would uh, i don't know whether it's a teacher or a student over here but uh, just choose a university that is flexible has got curriculum that's you know you can choose for example at shulini you could be starting at bcom and after bcom you are think oh i want to do computer science and we'll allow you to do that in fact we'll encourage you to do that or you could say i want to do a major in bcom but a minor in music you can do that so i think uh, uh, there's a lot of freedom in good universities to study what you want and be very practical about it uh, it's very important to choose the right university i think that's uh, that's the key because old way of thinking was rotating uh learning by remembering and that's the first part of actually success and that's i think what narain was also trying to say say right at the start you need to move from data to wisdom so you need to choose a university that's going to push you towards asking questions push you towards wisdom i don't know whether you agree to me uh, just in there ma'am uh, i think as a school you also bring in a lot of practicality into the stuff but your hands are still tied with cbsc i guess Uh, yes you are right that uh, uh, but uh, I, i think i would not like to blame the cbsc here right uh, in mo- almost all the subjects now there is a practical aspect i mean the, the curriculum which we are supposed to finish by the time the children face the board examination there is lot of uh, practical knowledge which they have to gain that's right uh, but you know for the last uh, one decade what i am observing uh, after class 10 
the students uh, you know they, they they their mind shifts from the the proper uh, schooling they are more allured by uh, the educators sitting in the marketplace right the, the coaching centers so to say so yeah. what is happening they are getting the you know the the lowest part of bloom's taxonomy that is uh, knowledge that's right information they are gaining over there and uh, there is no scope for getting into the practical knowledge of that subject even for sciences even no, I, physics and chemistry are being taught in in a tight uh, classroom absolutely just, i can tell you just in the mem when i and this must be true for your school also when i look at my classmates or students uh, you know there are students who were not that good at studies and they've actually been and done outstandingly well in uh, in life because they were not remembering or noting so yes. 99.9% doesn't mean anything uh, uh, i i actually didn't tell the complete story when i was saying i was a bad student i got 76% marks uh, students i never took any tuition ever uh, i there was not a single question i didn't know but i just didn't know how to write the answer well so i was hiding one part of the story so ma'am is absolutely right if you can understand the stuff and you can have that wisdom in in you and keep away from these tuitions and commercial coaching classes uh, that's what something at least my i pushed my son not to do that uh, and i think he's very happy i need, i think it needs courage also you know because the whole world is going yes, for uh, all these classes and all that sort of stuff that's happening <laughs> while, while so. listening to your story atul uh, i was reminded of my own uh, you know college days uh you know my basic subject is physics i joined this school as a physics teacher and uh, i am a post graduate in physics and it was uh, in class 11 in the very first examination in the college in the month of september i passed all others but physics <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> and you know reminds me of three idiots right i think the movie three idiots so <laughs> and every year every year as long as i was a teacher here i used to tell my personal story to my students of class 11 when they used to come to me in my physics class that this your physics teacher was a failure herself in physics but if you have the courage you know to treat that failure as a stepping stone towards yes. success absolutely right okay. then there is nothing in the world that stops you so you're talking about courage and monisha is asking a question and we've got like five odd minutes now left narin so we'll do a little quick answering how do you build courage i think monisha is asking this question Yes, that's a very good question, and and the way I have experienced that is is by doing small small things of courageous thing. Like I said, public speaking was one thing, right? Um, you know, doing. Uh, I'm not saying like you know do very very courageous things all the time, right? Uh, go and talk. Go and find a mentor. Put yourself in uncomfortable positions. Like uh, uh, go and ask an uncle, uh, you know, to help you because you 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 feel like you you are not going to. he's not going to tell you anything because you, he might say that oh you know this is such a stupid question why why would we uh, why would i even bother so you before before even asking the question you don't have the courage to go and ask the question so these are small small courageous things keep doing small courageous things all the time be aware that it is a courageous thing and your courage will ultimately improve so that is my process that i have learned public speaking is surely one of them i mean it's like jumping you know uh you first jump let's say 3 feet then 6 feet then 10 feet then do a jump bungee jump and then you can jump from uh, a plane you know just like uh, that movie that came uh, yeah zindagi na milegi dobara so Correct. that's the way i actually i don't know i, I haven't mentioned this just winter ma'am but i'm actually a qualified pilot and i'm also qualified uh, uh, i've 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 done jumps uh, skydive i'm a qualified skydiver so i've done around 60 jumps Uh, oh the first jump was so difficult right i mean i thought i would die and uh, after that you just start loving it so i think that's how you build the courage don't, don't do all of that that i did uh, those all stupid things but courage could also be one of the things i do uh, just with the mem is i i am so scared of going on the dance floor i can't dance i have two left feet but i go and dance because Talk i tell my i am also i am also very <laughs> very afraid of dancing but i am so good my, at singing <laughs> so my my students sometimes call me to dance and i actually dance because i tell them that you know i know for you to come on stage and speak is as difficult as it is for me to dance so how can you speak if i can't be a role model for you so i do that harsh is asking a question he's saying many students have to pursue a career because their parents are pushing them and some can't don't have the courage to uh, you know uh, 
challenge the parents and then they end up very dissatisfied. What can they do uh, to sort it out? How can they solve it? If you allow me, Naren, I'll answer this. Uh, please, see, please. students, many times parents are right. Uh, so sometimes you have to go with them. I would again say just choose the right university. And I'll give an example of Shulini once again. Uh, around 30 to 40 percent of courses that you would study are optional. For example, you're doing a BCom and you're very interested in music. So you can take uh, at least one one course every semester on music. So by the time you graduate out, you would have got a minor, which is six courses in music itself, and then pursue a career in music. So choosing the right place you go to will be very, very important because when you're in 11th or 12th, uh, you also have to, you know, it's a balance you'll have to make unless you think uh, you're very, very passionate about something. Many times parents are also very right and teachers are right, but do get counseling from your parents. Uh, I'm going to leave my Insta uh, page over here. You can come and take guidance from me. Probably Naren can also leave his Insta uh, handle over here. Uh, but uh, just just don't believe what you think is right because sometimes as a as a 12th standard, 18 year old, you could also be wrong. So uh, so get a lot of guidance from your uh, from your teachers, from people who really understand, who are very genuine uh, in terms of uh, in terms of going ahead. Uh, there's a question on uh, careers after commerce. Uh, I think, again, I'm probably the best. So again, you can do a CA, a Harshit, you can do an MBA, uh, you can actually do anything. And uh, Naren talks about discontinuity in careers. He's left his biology world and he's now become an inspirational speaker. So, but, but typically after commerce, you'll do either a CA or you'll do an MBA and you'll work in uh, either in a bank or in a FMCG company or in a large corporate. So that's what you should, or you can become an entrepreneur, right? I mean, I just forgot about that. Any other thought, Narain, on this? You've seen lots and lots of people around with different careers, uh, who are CAs. I think, I think the sky's the limit in, as far as, you know, what, what you can do. Uh, and But like uh, Atul was saying, be, be focused on what you want. And, and there's no right or wrong. It's just pursue your passion. And after some time, if you feel like, you know, that's something that was the wrong decision. You can always change your mind and do something else, but you know, put your full heart and make yeah. sure that you put your full energy in what you decide to do. Yeah. Uh, anonymous attendee, uh, again, please have the courage to write your names in the future. That's my request to students and teachers here. Uh, suggest some college for automobile engineering. We at Shulani have a great automobile engineering program. Uh, personally, I also sit on the board of a very large automotive company. Uh, happy to you know talk about it. Go to our website uh, www.shuliniuniversity.com, and if you fill in the inquiry form, some counselor will get in touch with you. Uh, also, you can reach out to me. I'll uh, like I said, leave my Insta handle. It's Atul Khosla two zero one three. Just uh, don't hesitate to reach out to me. I am very active on Insta, so you can always get guidance from me on anything you do. I can also tell you that I will not push Shulani if I don't believe it's the right thing for you. Uh, so just go ahead with that. Uh, let's see what other questions. How can I know that the profession I take is my best? What do you think, Naren? Do you think you can tell uh, right at the start? Yeah, you know, uh, that's a good question. And, and I feel you had you had pointed it out earlier in, in a different uh, context. You had said that don't worry about the subject that you're going to do so much as the place that you're going to study in, you know, because the environment has a big role to play in how you, you grow. Um, so, the, so let's say in this in this situation, if you if you follow a job, a lot of the things that you experience in the job uh, are not necessarily because of the subject but, but or, or the topic. Uh, a lot of people who are your co-workers will influence you, your boss will influence you uh, on whether you might love the subject, but you might have a terrible boss. So then you will, you will, you unaware to yourself, you will say, oh, I don't like this subject. But it's not because you don't like the subject, it is because you don't like the boss. But once you start becoming aware that, you know, it's the, it's, it's the environment that is influencing you not to like your subject then you will focus on your subject. So I think that awareness thing is, should, be, should be there. So you should know what you want and you should know what are the things around you that are influencing what you want to get, where you want to go and then address each one individually or, you know, and then that will help you, you know, move forward in a system. I'm, I'm going to be a little philosophical and if uh, just Swinder ma'am helps me, I think we're all adults, so I can say this, you know, finding a right profession is like love. So you know when you get it, okay? 
it'll just happen. It'll be like love and you'll fall in love with the right profession. And I think that's what happens. And by the way, nowadays, like you might not even have, you might have multiple loves in your life the same way you might have, do multiple professions. Like Naren is exploring music nowadays. So, but you'll get to know. Uh, uh, Jess is asking, uh, should I prefer branch over college or college over branch in aeronautical engineering? So Jess, you asked the right person. I'm actually an aeronautical engineer. That's what I did at IIT Kanpur. I studied aerospace engineering or aeronautical engineering. Unless you are very, very sure, do not go with the branch because aeronautical is very, very specialized. Not many jobs out there. You can always specialize uh, later on in aeronautical. I'll suggest Jess, you do mechanical or do a program or a course in AI, artificial intelligence. And if you really, really love aeroplanes or spacecrafts, you can, for your masters, you can specialize. And that's another one last thing I'll say, don't specialize too much in your undergrad. Uh, get a broader degree. Nowadays, there are a lot of specializations happening. Uh, universities are giving degrees to very specialist. Avoid those nanotechnology, for example, BTEC. I would rather uh, encourage you to do a degree in the traditional courses and then you can always, if you love it, you can always do a specialization later on. I don't know whether you agree with me, Narain, here. Uh, uh, no, in terms of specialization versus uh, generalist courses. Yeah, I think for, first you get a broad base to see what, what, what all there are possibilities and then you can focus a little. You have, you have 30, 40 years to work, so it's there's plenty of time. So I think uh, there's a last question I'm going to take, which is whether this is the right time for foreign study going and doing an undergrad in foreign universities. And there's one question on which I cannot say no to. How do you find the purpose of your life? So Naren, let's pick up these two questions. Uh, and uh, we'll then, if we, if we get the time, we'll answer these questions by email to the students. So uh, foreign study and purpose of life, two questions. Just remember, ma'am, I love your response also to these two. Quickly, uh, you know, uh, the foreign um, students, I'm a foreign uh, um, universities. My personal experience has been, uh, you know, I, I left India and went to university uh, in, um, in, in the US when after I was 26 years old, I finished my PhD by then. Um, and I can truly say that, you know, getting, uh, getting a worldly experience of different cultures has been really helpful for me to understand uh, all aspects. So more, more you travel, the, the more experiences you get. That, that's sort of the summary of, uh, of whether to work. Uh, yeah. so, but, but I would say, I think uh, typically I've seen students more successful after uh, doing an undergrad in India, a lot of very good universities in India now and go for your masters. It's cheaper. And I think more valuable doing a masters overseas. Mm. In any case, right now, Corona is out there. So at least that's my thought. What do you think just when ma'am, uh, uh, India versus overseas. A lot of students from Punjab want to go to Canada. Uh, yeah, that's right. But I agree with you that at least for undergraduation, they should stay in India, right? Become more mature, become more, uh, you know, uh, self-responsible. Yes. <laughs> you know, um, uh, going abroad, uh, totally at the cost of your parents, your family is not advisable, at least not now. Even earlier, I, I was always of the opinion that at least for their graduation part, they should stay in India. There are wonderful universities, there are wonderful institutions, right? And after that, uh, Naren has said it very right, that the more you travel, the more you know, cultures you Absolutely. explore, the better you become in life. That's what I would like. And, and travel, you know, and don't eat Indian food, I would say, when you travel. I've been in, like I said, 35 <laughs> different cities. I refuse to behave like what they call desi. I've always mingled with new cultures and that's been the success of my life. I just went there, man, uh, Naren, sir. Naren, there's a question Divam is asking before we go into the purpose of life. Are you standing or sitting? So uh, Divam is asking. <laughs> So many, I have so many meetings. I find that, you know, I do my stretches, I'm doing my yoga while I'm doing my, you know, all these things I'm doing. So, you know, it's, it's a, you know, by sitting for so long, you know, I, I, I get stiff knee. So you're standing, so, right? You know, to Lovely. Stand and do it. Great. Okay. How do you find your purpose of life? The why? Oh my God. Um, uh, I, I, it's one of the most difficult questions. <laughs> ask oneself um, I, I guess in my own experiences um, the purpose of life 
the, I mean, it's, it's really idealistic to think that you have one purpose in life and that's what you're trying to go towards. Yeah, you're a shining star and you follow the star, forget about it. But I think, I think there's a distribution of things that you are interested in, right? Always, you know, like for example, in this part of my life, I'm more interested in mentoring, for example you know, in, in helping students and helping people based on my experience. It, it may sound very altruistic. It might, it might sound egotistic. It's, it might sound very, you know, professor, professor, you know, like, but you know, the reality is I enjoy talking to young people because I wish in my own experiences, one thing I felt like I didn't have, I didn't know I needed a mentor. I, uh, no one told me or I didn't figure out. So I think it is useful for you to understand that you need a mentor. And how do you get a mentor? That's sort of been my current purpose of life. So that's wow. my wow. What about you, Jaswinder, ma'am? How, how did you find your purpose and how should students find their purpose in life? Uh, yeah, if you ask about me, you know, uh, uh, when I was a teacher, I loved my subject, first of all. Uh, after my graduation, I tell you, I first joined masters in mathematics, but then I felt that yeah, maths was not my first love, it was physics. So I gave up within two, three days, I changed college, I changed the university and went for masters in physics. Right? Then, uh, you know, I became a teacher of physics and I really found that I, I loved my subject and I gave my hundred to the subject and that became my passion. I became kind of, you know, a very, very loved teacher. I, the children were really fond of me. Then I came into administration. And once into administration now for about 13, 14 years, again, for, for me, you know, the mantra is that you love your, love your work. Don't, you know, do any of toba about it. Even if it's asking for your you know, personal time, your family time, do it lovingly. And certainly, you, you'll keep enjoying it. So your, your profession becomes your passion then. For me, it's like that. <laughs> Fantastic. You know, I, I so agree with you, Jaswinder, ma'am. If I tell uh, about me, I think I'll, I'll answer it by saying, all of us have a certain set of values. So your purpose of life will come from your values. For example, yeah. I come from a family of teachers. And I've always heard that teaching is a very noble profession. I grew up with my Nana telling me that he, his stories about how he left, he fled actually, he was being trained by his, grand, by his father to be a lawyer in UK, in England, uh, during this is pre-partition. And how he ran away from uh, college and, uh, and how he uh, you know, uh, went and did a degree in education and became a teacher, came to Himachal, became a teacher in a small town, a very fascinating journey that, so those are the values I grew up in. So uh, my purpose in life is always to help, uh, so I'm very socialist in my thoughts. So my purpose in life is always to do something that I can help the poor on the people who are the lesser privileged. And that's what I continue to do. Somewhere along the way, Naren, when I was in the corporate world, you know, I became very capitalist or money meant a lot to me. I think we all have to go through our journeys in life to figure out what our purpose in life is. And, uh, but my purpose in life in college was to help the lesser privileged. It continues to be to help the lesser privileged and make a deep impact on my students. Uh, I genuinely believe that every student can be super successful, can be a Narain or a Atul or a Jaswinder. We just have to give the right guidance to him or her. Uh, so you'll find your purpose, uh, students. Uh, don't worry too much about it. It'll happen to you. But do keep asking this question, uh, what is my purpose? Some will be excited by innovation. Some will be excited by money. Some will be, but money cannot be a purpose really. So find it out. Uh, some might be excited by art. You know, some might be excited by music, uh, sports. So you'll, you'll get your purpose, keep on experimenting, flirting, uh, dating with different things and you'll figure it out. Uh, again, like I said, uh, most important for you, especially who are 11th and 12th, going to a quality university is very, very important because that place will ignite the purpose of your life. That will help you understand the purpose of your life. So those were my last thoughts. So before I close, uh, each one of you have to give one last sentence uh, only you're only allowed one sentence, Naren, 
and Jaswinder ma'am, you also. Last message to the students and teachers. Narain, over to you. One, one sentence. Yeah. I think be aware of your surroundings and uh, figure out a way for uh, absorbing all the information that you get to convert it to wisdom. Fantastic. Uh, Jaswinder ma'am, you want to come in and give your last uh, one sentence to your students? Uh, well, I would like to say that whatever stream or choice of subjects my children, my students have already made, they must work in, in a manner that they excel in their chosen field. Absolutely. And I think uh, converging to that to me will be to say, you know, get the fire in the belly out of you. Passion. Just then passion agya, us then dunya aapke saame juk jayegi, you will become the leader of the world. Uh, you don't have to be a great English speaker or a great student. Look at Mr. Modi. If speaking English was the criteria to succeed, India would be run by someone with the surname G and not M. And you know what I'm referring to over here. So passion is more important. What ma'am said, hard work is very important. I think with that, we're coming to an end. Uh, thank you very much, Narin ma'am, Jaswinder ma'am, students, teachers. What a fascinating session. I've really, really loved every moment of uh, being on this particular session. Uh, amazing, I think, uh, uh, involvement of your students, ma'am. What, what amazing students, what lovely questions. Just shows the quality of the school and the quality of the teachers that are there. Uh, last time I felt the same, you know, when I, there's so much energy we got out of this talk, largely because of the audience. Thank you so, and, so, so, you so know, much. Uh, we always say that when there are children around, you always get to laugh. And that's what one of my students made us laugh by asking the question, <laughs> sir, whether you are standing or sitting. <laughs> so <laughs> <amazing. they> <laughs> and that shows that, uh, you know, we are really missing our children on the campus. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So be safe, students. Uh, choose the right uh, 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 career, choose the right college, but don't worry too much. Have fun, dream big and just go back to your teachers. You're in very safe hands. You are got such a wonderful school, such wonderful teachers. So keep on, you know, pestering them for the right answers. Once again, uh, anytime you want to reach out to us, uh, do that, uh, Shulini University is it. And I've given my Insta handle. Uh, you might want to do that, Narin, if you have Insta. Yeah, I'll do uh, yeah and uh, thank you once again a lot. Thank wonderful, you. wonderful. Thank you, so thank you to Banshu. Thank, thank you, Dr. Narain, and thank uh, you, thank you, Mr. Atul Khosla. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye bye. Bye.